Okay, hello. We are going to cover 3.10 Lagrange multipliers in this video. Um, I did attempt to previously record um, this section. However, I realized that I never hit record only after I had finished the whole thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I already have everything all written down. All the solutions are already there. Everything, you know, you can see all the little checks and whatnot, but that's because I had already done the video, um, but I hadn't done the video. So I thought I had, but it's okay. Um, so I'm not gonna rewrite everything. I'm just gonna kind of explain the process. Um, there are a couple of examples in the, in the lecture videos or the lecture slides. So the lecture slides may have been enough for you to be able to complete this assignment on your own. But if not, I did have these examples um, as a guide, okay? Now, essentially the process is the same for every single problem, except the last one's tiny, tiny bit different, um, but it's all about solving systems of equations. We just have to basically figure out what that system of equations is gonna look like, okay? So, um, the main idea with the Lagrange multipliers is that if you take the gradient of the function you're trying to maximize and the gradient of the constraint function um, with or without the constant, it really doesn't matter because when you take the gradient, the constants are going to be zero anyway, right? Um, and so if you take those gradients, they have a relationship of, uh, of a factor, okay? And they call that factor lambda, um, and eventually they call it a Lagrange multiplier. So the Lagrange multiplier is what gives you that relationship. And, um, and that can actually be used to create this systems of equations because if that is true, that these two gradients are um, basically multiples of one another, then you can go ahead and figure out what x value and what y value is going to make the first components true, the second components true, and your constraint true at the same time, okay? Um, and only a certain point or certain points will um, allow that to happen, okay? So here's goes nothing, right? So this problem number one says they want me to minimize f of x equal to x squared plus y squared, and they give me the constraint x plus 2y minus 10 equals zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is define a secondary function for me to take the gradient of, okay? Now, normally, it doesn't matter whether the constant is there or not, so I just took the whole left side and let this be g of x and said that the constant was equal to zero. Okay, I could have moved the 10 over and just let g of x equal this, and then just make the statement that the constant is 10. Um, I didn't do that, but I'm just letting you know that that could have been an option, okay? Because regardless, when you take the gradient of g, you're going to still get one and two, okay? Now remember what the gradient is, it's the derivative with respect to x in the first component, and then the derivative with respect to y in the second component. So for the gradient of f, we ended up with 2x and then 2y. And so I know according to the Lagrange multipliers, this is supposed to have this relationship, which means that this vector should equal lambda times this vector. And then this is where systems of equations comes from, because my first component should be satisfied, my second component should be satisfied, and my constraint should be satisfied. And if I can find the x and y values that satisfy all three of those equations, I will have found the point in which the extrema is located, okay? So what I did was, um, since it's saying that lambda equals 2x, I went ahead and plugged 2x in for lambda into the second equation. So the second equation became 2y equal to 2 times 2x, which meant that y 2y equals 4x, or if I divide both sides by 2, that y is equal to 2x. So then what I did was I plugged that 2x in for y, so that in my constraint, it would be nothing but an equation in x, and then I could solve for x. So I took, um, and I guess I should have put a line here, but I took this and I plugged it into there. 
So that gave me x plus two times the two x that is equivalent to y minus 10, which gave me x plus four x minus 10 equals zero, which gave me five x. And eventually I got x equal to two, okay? Now you could have plugged it back up here to figure out what lambda is, but it wasn't necessary really to know what lambda is. What's more necessary is finding those coordinates x and y, okay? So since I did know x and I wanna figure out y, I plugged it in here and it told me that y was equal to four. So then I know the point where my extrema is located. So notice that that's the coordinates that I put into f, right, to come four. But in order for me to find what it is equivalent to, I had to actually plug in two and four into the function that was given to me. And the function was x squared plus y squared. So when I plugged those in, I ended up with four plus 16, which gave me 20, okay? And so that was the answer for number one. Now for number two, everything is very much the same. Um, here, the function is a little bit different. Constraint is a little different, but it doesn't matter. So I let my g of x equal this function where my constant was zero. I took the gradient of f, which happens to be 16x and negative four y. And then the gradient of G happens to be negative six X and nine for um, G with respect to Y, derivative of G with respect to Y. And then from there, I set up my systems of equations. So 16 X should equal Lambda times negative six X, negative four Y should equal Lambda times nine, and then my constraint. So since I did have, um, I wanted to solve for Lambda so I took this equation and then I divided, um, or no, I plugged it in for this guy. No, what did I do? Why do I have that lambda circled? I wanted to substitute something in for lambda. That's what it is. So I took this middle equation and I solved for lambda because it was pretty easy just to divide by nine on both sides. So I got that lambda equal this fraction. And then I plugged in that fraction in replacing lambda in the top equation. So that equation became 16x equal to that fraction, negative 4y over 9 times negative 6x, which gave me, um, I think I multiplied both sides by 9 to get rid of the fraction. And that gave me 144x. And then the 9 was eliminated over here. I'll mark that by doing 9 times this and this times 9. So that's gone. And I did get a positive 24xy in the numerator. So then I moved this term over, I factored out 24x, I ended up with y minus six, I set each factor equal to zero, and so I have two different scenarios of what could happen, okay? Now remember, number two says we are trying to maximize, and um, it's saying that x and y are positive. So x equaling zero, well one, that's not positive, first of all, so it's automatically should be not considered. But even if you did consider it, you're going to get y equal to zero, and then your function value is going to be zero. That's definitely not going to be a maximum, right? So this one doesn't really give us any solutions here. So this one was not the solution, okay? But if I took the other case where y equals to six, maybe that would yield a solution, okay? So if y were equal to six, then I would have, um, I took this restriction the constraint down here and I plugged in six. So I would get 54 minus 3x squared equal to zero. Um, I added the 3x squared over and divided by three, which gave me this. And then I took the square root on both sides. And I do get plus or minus, but remember what it said. It says assume that x and y are negative, which means that the negative option is not considered, okay? So X has to be positive three squared to two and the Y was six. And so then if I plug in those values for X and Y into the original function, I ended up with 72. Okay, number three. So for number three, little screen up. Okay, there we go. So for number three, we had the function um, 6x plus 6xy plus y. 
And then we have the constraint 6x plus y equal to 600, okay? And so I let g of x equal this function and my constant is just 600. So I took the gradient of f. I got 6, 6y, and nothing. Then um, nothing, 6x, and 1. Then I took the gradient of g, which would have been 6, and then 1. And so then I set this component equal to this component. I set the second component equal to the second component. And then I have my constraint down here at the bottom. Now, I did go ahead and um, because I already have lambda solved for here, I did plug this in for lambda over here. And so I got this top equation. And when I distributed this six, I ended up with this equation. And then I just started solving and I ended up with that y equals six x. So I decided to plug that into the constraint. So instead of y, I used six x, which meant 12 x equals 600 or the x equal to 50. So now that I have my x value, I plugged it back into there and I got my y value 300. And so then at that point, if I evaluate the function at that point by plugging in 550 for x and 300 for y, I ended up with this value here. And that was what I plugged into the system. Similarly, for number four, here was my function, right, for number four. This was my constraint for number four. I let g of x equal just the variable part and I moved the constant over making the constant six. And then I took the gradients of both f and g. So for f, I got two x, two y, two z. And for g of x, y, z, I got one, one, and one, okay? So then I set my components equal to each other. There they are, third components as well. And my constraint should all be included. Now, since they already solved here for lambda, um, a lambda is equal to all of these, which tells me that 2x is the same as 2y, which is the same as 2z. And if I divide all of these by 2, I get the relationship that x, y, and z are going to be the same values. Okay. Now, what I did was I also solved each of these for lambda, and I got that x was lambda over 2, y was lambda over 2, and z was lambda over 2. And then I plugged those all in to figure out what lambda was. So I ended up with three halves lambda minus six equal to zero, three halves lambda equal to six. And if you multiply, divide both sides by three halves, you get lambda equals four. So if I know what lambda is, then I know that two X equals four now, two Y equals four and two Z equals four, which means that X equals two, Y equals two and Z equals two. So now I know all of the values for x, y, and z. I plugged them all into the function and I got the function value. Okay, number five. Number five was, took a little bit more space. So I might have to move my paper up. But this one had the function x, y, z and this constraint. I did move the three over and just used g of x, y, z as the variable part of that equation. And then I took the gradient. So the gradient of f is x, uh, y, z, x, z, x, y. The gradient of g is just one, one, one. And then I set each of these components equal so that I could get my three equations. And then I put the constraint as my fourth equation. Now for these two, I figured out that Y was this relationship, X was this relationship. And since these are both in terms of Z, I went ahead and plugged them into the restraint so that my um, equation would have nothing but Z's in it and then I could solve for Z. Um, so I did go ahead and do that. And when I did that, um, I found out that if I multiply everybody by Z, the common denominator, Um, here they canceled. So I had lambda plus lambda and z squared minus 3z. I'm realizing that this was wrong here. 3z equal to still zero. So then hopefully, I mean, I got the right answer. So hopefully it doesn't affect it too much, but let's just go with the corrections. So then I get two lambda plus z squared minus 3z equal to zero. And then what I did here was I had two variables and I don't want two variables. I just want one variable. 
So I went ahead and tried to figure out something, okay? So um, we do know that x, y equals lambda. So I plugged in the expression I had for x and the expression I had for y equal to lambda, which gave me that lambda squared over z squared equals lambda. I multiplied both sides by z squared. And I got that lambda squared equaled lambda times z squared. Um, and then really I shouldn't have done this. Um, well, what I did was I divided by lambda just to figure out what z squared was because, or to figure out what lambda was. Really what I should have done is I should have factored it. So what I should have done is I should have moved over this and then I should have factored this. Um, lambda out and then I would have had zero equals to lambda and zero equal to z squared minus lambda which means lambda equals z squared but this one your lambda is not supposed to be zero it's supposed to be a number bigger than zero so that's how I knew that that was not going to work okay so I do have this relationship of lambda equal to z squared so now instead of lambda, I'm going to plug in the z squared. And that's what I did there. Then I had z squared plus z squared equal minus 3z, which gave me 3z squared times 3z, which means that this is not correct. I'm going to do it a different way. You'll see in just a second. Um, I get minus, I will have to factor out a 3z in common and I get z minus one equals zero. So I get three z equal to zero and z minus one equal to zero, which means z equals zero and z equals one. Now remember, it says in the problem that x, y, and z are positive. Zero is not positive, it's neutral, okay? So I cannot have zero as my answer. So that definitely means I need to have, um, also if z were zero, when you go to plug it into F, won't you get just zero? That's definitely not gonna be a maximum. Max, that would be the minimum, okay? So that's definitely not going to be the correct Z value. So one is the correct Z value, okay? And then from there, we're gonna go back and plug in. Since I know that, um, I know now I can go back up to this equation right here. I now know that uh, z equals one. So I have lambda over one, lambda over one, plus one minus three equal to zero. So this tells me that two lambda minus two equals zero or that lambda equals one. Once I know that lambda equals one, I plugged it back in here and I got that one over one is one, one over one is one. So x is one, y is one, and z is one, which gives me the product of just one. Okay, um, it just happens to be what it is, but within that constraint, that is the maximum. Now, number six is different. Number six has two constraints, okay? And so when you have two constraints, you have this relationship where the lambda times the first constraint plus another multiplier times the second constraint will give you the, gra the gradient of the function, okay, that you're trying to maximize. So this is what I'm trying to maximize. These are the two constraints. So for the first constraint, I did let the g of x, y, z equal the variable part, and I set the constant as 28. For the second constraint, just to have another name, I called it h of x, y, z and I let it be the variable part, again, with the constant equal to 16. And so then I went and figured out the gradients of each. So the gradient of f is y, z, x, z, x, y. The gradient of g is 1, 1, 1. The gradient of h is 1, negative 1, 1. And so then I set all the first components. So y, z equal to 1 lambda plus 1 mu. That's the top equation. The middle component xz equal to one lambda minus one mu, which is what I have there for the second equation. Then the third component, xy plus one lambda plus one mu, I gave me the third equation. 
And then I had to add in both of my constraints in this system of equations. So this is how I did it. Again, you solve the, the system the way you solve systems. However it is that you solve systems, do that, okay? This is just the way I solved them. So this is the way that I did it. But I mean, you're gonna come up with the same solutions as long as you're solving it correctly. So what I did was I took equation one and three. So equation one and three says that lambda plus mu equals this and lambda plus mu equals that, which means that the yz and the xy should equal each other, right? If they're both equivalent to lambda plus mu. So then I moved this over and then I factored out the y. And so then I got that y equals zero or that z minus x equals zero. We know that y cannot equal zero because it's supposed to be, well, it says non-negative. So somebody could be zero, but it just didn't make sense to me that, the, that this product would be maximized if any one of these guys is zero, okay? Because we know they can't be negative. They're gonna be either positive or zero but it just doesn't seem like zero would be the maximum of this thing. So I outruled it just by logic, okay? So then I thought, well, it's either this or this, so obviously it's gotta be this relationship, okay? So if I take that relationship, um, I went ahead and figured out what it would look like in the, first, um, in the first restraint. I also was gonna go put it in the second restraint, but then um, I went in a different direction, okay? So, First, what I did was I plugged it into the first constraint and I ended up with um, uh, replacing the Z with the X. So this became um, X plus Y plus another X equal to 28. And so then I got 2X plus Y equal to 28 or um, 2X, oh, I did plug it into here. So when I plugged it into the other one, right, into this one, I got X minus Y plus X, which was 2X, and then minus y equal to 16. So I plugged it into both, which eliminated the z variable. And so now what happens is I've created a system of equations with two different equations, but only an x and y. So then I just went ahead and did the addition method because those guys would knock out right away. And I got 4x and then I got 44, which meant that x equals 11. And I already knew this relationship that z was equal to x. So that meant that z was also equal to 11. So then it didn't really matter which equation I used, I just happened to use equation four, but if I plug in 11 for X and 11 for Z, I can compute the value for Y, okay? And so then I figured out that the point of the maximum was gonna occur at 11, six, 11. So I found that product and it just so happened to be seven, two, six, okay? Um, and then I went over here and I thought to myself, well, now that I know what X and Y are, I could find out what Lambda and Mu were, but it's not necessarily, it's not necessary to do that. I just went a little crazy trying to solve for everybody. Um, but that is the end of 3, 13.10.